Yo, Elliot, I recently read an article about a Biden proposed legislation that would have all the IRS monitor our bank accounts, any bank account with over $600 in them, all right? Uh, as things continue to become more Orwellian by the day, how can we maintain our privacy and push against the system without confronting it? And uh, that's a very good question. It's a great question. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole lot that we have to confront, or it, or better yet, is confronting us, right? Because prior to 2020, we were kind of just living our lives, right? And maybe there were some uncomfortable things about the world that we live in, but it wasn't so confrontational. Everything's being thrown up in our face right now. And, um, and I have... Um, am of the opinion that it's because these are the dying screams, the last scratches, the holding on for dear life for Satan's plan on this planet through the globalists. And so they're pulling out all stops right now. They're, I've never seen them rush so quickly, be so obvious, show all their cards and behave so recklessly. And it seems as if people are maybe becoming more uncomfortable with it, maybe becoming more aware of it uh, and, and, and standing up and saying no, right? And so who knows what the course of the next three to five years is going to look like, but I'll tell you this, it will not look like life as usual. Those of you guys who are waiting for life to go back to normal, <laughs> that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And if you're so addicted to wanting things to go back to normal that you're willing to follow all the dictates by this satanic cabal, then you're going to be very upset. You're going to be in for a rude awakening, just like all those people who, uh, when told, hey, if you get a vaccine, if you get this shot, you can go back to life as normal and you'll be immune from COVID. Well, we are discovering now that that's not true. Right now, you people are getting the shot and they still got to wear masks. They still got to social distance. They still go through these lockdowns in their cities. Right. Uh, and then so it's take the second shot, take the third shot. And people are starting to say, wait a second, you promised me that I would be able to live life normally again. And it's, it's just not that's not really in the cards. That's not really the plan. The plan is, as you say, for things to become more and more Orwellian each day. And so here's how I've been thinking about it lately. These power controls have really descended upon us in a rapid succession since 9-11. And the, the, one of the stark differences between the world at 9-11 and the world today is the sheer volume of what gets done online. Everything is done in the clouds. And so when life goes from day-to-day, face-to-face, mano y mano interaction down to earth with physical transactions, they're not as easily manipulated. They're not easy, you're not as easily uh, surveilled because that's really what it is. It's been a surveillance, uh, it's a surveillance program. All, the, all this technology that we've come to fall in love with and create such comfort and ease in our life is also, a, it's a double-edged sword, is also a form of surveillance. Right, so having the cell phones is so exciting. During nine, I remember nine eleven. Right, I'm, I'm not that old, right? Or I am that old, right? Does that mean I'm old? It was just it just passed twenty years, right? I was literally twenty two years old, and my cell phone at the time was a like a block, like it was just, a, and I was like one of the only people with a cell phone. Um, post nine eleven, they became much. They've become much more. Uh, uh, they're much more elaborate in their abilities to do certain things, including surveil us, right? So uh, we have the cell phones, we have Siri, right? Listening in on all our conversations or Alexa, right? All of this is, uh, is, is stuff that we accepted, th things that we adopted and things that we love, right? We love the ease of online communication. We love the ease of GPS tracking us so that we know how to get where we wanna go without looking at a paper map because Siri will tell us, right? These are all very, uh, these are all very uh, convenient things. And so the way we trade has changed, right? The way we trade, there was a time when you carried cash. I remember those days, right? Not to say that there weren't cards, there were cards, but the majority of people traded with cash, 
right? Cash is a tough thing because it cannot be it cannot be monitored to any really great degree, right? But digital money can, right? And so how many of you, right, if you're listening to this, this is kind of like a, one of those rhetorical questions, you don't have to answer it, for, but answer it in your head. How many of you, or how many of us, because I'm right there with you guys, uh, actually carry cash around any longer? Nobody carries cash around anymore because everything is done through these chips, through technology, through the phone now. Now, ultimately, the phone will replace the credit cards, right? That's why they have the chips on the cards now, right? Those chips are, and they're available now through, you know, Apple Pay and things like that. So we scan our phones. We'll be able to scan our phones. And so everything is all, our entire lives are being consolidated into these little devices. And... Like I, I keep saying, we love it because it's convenient, right? How cool is it, bro, that I can just sit here and I can tap a few buttons, right? And in 24 hours, a truck's going to come to my house and deliver what I just bought, right? I didn't have to count, uh, count cash. I, didn't, I don't have any change, right? I don't have to go meet somebody. I don't have to go talk to somebody. I don't have to call anybody on a phone. I literally do it through an artificial intelligence, right? I, I literally do it through software, right? That just does it for me, right? So the reason why I say all this is because in a way we've accepted or we crave for our own hell. And with, these, with, with the new technology, with these technologies, we gain some comfort and some convenience, but at the same time, we lose a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of freedom, right? And the more addicted we become to it, the more addicted we become to these lifestyles, right? The more we forget what life was like before cell phones and digital currency, right? Uh, the more we just will fall in line with whatever comes our way in terms of, uh, like you say, legislation, right? And things of this nature, right? Well, okay, cool. As long as, I, as long as I get to keep my phone, as long as I can order from Amazon, as long as I can go on Facebook, right? We, we, will, we will just accept it. It's a really good book. Actually, I have it right here. Live Not By Lies, right? I would suggest you get this book by Rod Dreher. And he talks about, he interviews people who lived in uh, the Eastern Europe, Russia, during the Bolshevik Revolution, and, uh, and then the rise of the Soviet Union and you know all that turmoil. And he talks to these old people who survived the surveillance state that was erected at that time by the Marxists. And he says that they had to, in order to surveil the people, they had to bug their houses, right? They had to spy on them, like spy, go out and like literally like use binoculars and spy on them. They had set up spy networks so that they would have neighbors spying on neighbor, things of this nature, right? And so it was all like against our will, right? All the surveillance and all the tyranny came uh, against our will. What, well, what he asserts in this book is that the new Marxist revolution, right? The new world order revolution, the, one, the global Marxist revolution, the one that we're going through right now, uh, they don't have to force us. They don't, have to, they don't have to quietly spy on us and they don't have to set up surveillance networks because we just bring it into our home. Oh, oh, Alexa, let me pay $300 for this surveillance tool that I'm gonna leave in my house and it's going to listen to everything that I say because it's so convenient. Play my favorite song. And it plays your favorite song, right? And then it's listening to everything else you say too. It doesn't just stop listening, right? So the whole, my whole point is that, and the author's point is that all of the tyranny enacted upon us in this day, during this phase of this, this movement, uh, we willingly accept, we willingly love, we willingly take in, we buy it right? We buy it and bring it into our home, right? Very little resistance. I was thinking too, and of course I'm ranting right now. I was thinking too, uh, or I was listening to a podcast where this guy was talking about um, the mass extinction as it was during the first Holocaust. I say the, I say the first Holocaust, but during the, the, the famous Holocaust, because there were lots of Holocausts, <laughs> lots of Holocausts, right? There's not just one, there wasn't just one Jewish Holocaust, right? The Jews against Germany, but that's just the one that we highlight because it serves a purpose for 
certain people, right? So that we make sure that everybody remembers this one. But there's no talk of the African Holocaust, right? You know, you know, you're not reading books about little African girls, right, who survived or lived through the Holocaust. We only read about the Jewish one. Why? 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 Why is that? Why is it? Why do we only pay attention to that Holocaust? Anyway, um, that Holocaust is much different than the Holocaust that we're facing today. And make, make no bones about it, we are facing a, a global extinction event. Uh, except people are accepting the extinction shots, right? Back then, they had to like they had to force it upon people or trick them. Well, I guess we're being tricked now too. But it was just it was just, it was things were done with more force, right? Whereas today, we're like, ooh, give it to me. Right? Give me the surveillance. Give me the Holocaust. Just kill me out of the out of my for my fear. You know, fear manipulates. We're manipulated by fear. So anyway, brother, right? You say that now things are getting so weird that uh, the IRS is going to be monitoring our bank accounts. Well, yeah, I heard that also. Um, the first thing that came to my mind when I heard that was, okay, what are they looking for, right? What are they looking for? Are they looking to see what I buy so that they can put me into a category of a particular type of person that they need to enact more surveillance on, right? What is it that they want to know that I'm doing? Is it that they are curious about the buy-in patterns of a certain demographic of people, right? What is their reason for it? Uh... So it was the first thing that came to mind. Why? 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 The next thing I started thinking, and I was thinking this for a few days, for a few days, is if I were, if I wanted to opt out of it, right? Because I'm complaining here. I'm talking shit here, but like I'm in it too. I'm just like you guys, right? I'm just calling it out, but I'm calling myself out too, right? I carry this damn surveillance thing around all day long, right? I got all my money in digital currency, right? I don't, I don't carry cash, right? But if it comes to a point where Things need to, like, things are getting so Orwellian, like you say, and the things need to change. What do we do? Well, we do what we did beforehand, right? And so what does that mean? That means if we're going to trade, we, we, we need to go back to paper currency or we need to go back to hard currency, currency like gold, right? Gold, silver, right? Precious metals. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about bartering lately, too. I was talking to my daughter about this the other day. I'm gr I'm building an orchard right now. It's my first step here on the on the ranch, and I've got about two dozen fruit trees and about a hundred berry trees. And within a year or so, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a cornucopia of fruit, you know, a whole lot of fruit. Well, of course, I can't eat all that fruit. Part of, part of the reason why I want so much of it is because I can can it and I can save it and I can trade it, right? I could potentially trade it if we get to a situation where we need to trade, but either the dollar is so denigrated that it's not worth anything, right? And that can happen. It's always happened. It's happened over and over and over again in history. Or the uh, the, the the control arms are so strong on uh, on on the digital currency. That we a lot of us just can't handle it anymore. And of course, they're coming down with a strong arm right now with the IRS monitoring the banks. But what happens when they say, okay, now you can't trade unless you take this medication. You can't trade unless you take this injection. You can't trade unless you bow down and worship these ideas, these ideals, and, uh, and follow along with the dictates of the state, right? What if, it, what if that continues? Right. So I think a lot of us, are, I think what's going to happen is there's going to be a black market. Right. This is just my guess. This is my opinion. This is what I think. I think there's going to be a black market. I think there's going to be a black market for trade. I think people are going to go back to barter systems. I think that we're going to be, we're, we're, we're going to have to give up a lot of our comforts, a lot of our conveniences in order to retain our freedoms. Right. So we're going to have to ask ourselves at some point, do I want freedom or do I want convenience? And that's really what it is. Do I want freedom? Or do we want convenience? And a lot of people are going to choose convenience because that's all we know. But those of us, right, who don't mind struggling a little bit, having a little bit of pain in our lives, suffering a little bit, this is why we fast, right, to remind ourselves, I can suffer. I can suffer. If you can fast, you can handle anything. Right? If you fast, you know you can suffer. So there, we may be called to suffer. And that might mean that uh, we don't use the 
the f- the currency, right? We we might we might have to opt out of using currency at some point, and we might need to have alternative currencies, right? And I'm not a fan. I don't. I, I don't. I'm not a fan of of like cryptocurrency, right? I have to plead ignorant to a degree. I don't know much about it, but something's a little fishy about it to me, right? It's a currency that nobody really knows who owns it. Where did it come from, right? And who really manipulates it? And there's a lot of manipulation going on. That's why the prices of uh, of cryptocurrencies, all right? What what is the, the main one called? I forget. Bitcoin goes up and goes down, goes up and goes down, right? Uh, I don't know. I think I think what they're doing with Bitcoin is preparing us for the one world, the new world currency, right? Because when the dollar loses its uh, position as the world reserve currency, they have to roll something else out. And so they're kind of already wetting our palate, palate, like getting us excited and making us think that this is something new, this is, this is something different. But I think, it's, I think it's the same old thing in a different guise. It's just, again, it's just my opinion. I don't know, right? I'm just telling you, I don't trust it. That's, my, that's all it is. I don't trust it right away. Like some people want to, you know, they jump right on these new things. I'm a little leery about new things, man. I've only started becoming leery about new things, you know, over the past five years or so, right? Like my boomer, my boomerness is catching up to me. And so you say, Iman, as things continue to become more Orwellian by the day, how can we maintain our privacy and push against the system without confronting it? And the answer is to check out. Like I said, just check out, right? I have no interest in fighting or confronting the system, right? But I like to turn my back. I like to turn around. I like to opt out, right? So there be there are going to be more and more things that we have to opt out of, right? Like so, for example, I opt out of government schools, right? I opt out of government schools for a long time, right? And I'm still paying taxes, paying taxes, right? But it's just a suffering that I have to endure. You pay taxes for public school, Elliot, but you don't send your kids there. No, they're going to take my money, but I'd rather maintain my freedom, right? You could take my money, but you never take my freedom, right? You could take my money. That's what it is, right? You could take my convenience. You can take my, all the things that are comfortable, but you'll never take my freedom, right? And so that, what that means is we just got to say no. Right? I'm not interested in marching in the streets. I'm not. I'm really not interested in changing the system. I have no interest in changing the system. The system literally needs to implode, right? It really just needs to exp- implode. That's not going to be nice, right? I'm not calling for that as if it's something beautiful. But at some point, the whole thing needs to crumble. Why am I going to try to patch it up? That's been the problem. The problem has been that Congress has been pr- trying to patch this shit up. Did you hear that yesterday... Was, and I don't know how it unfolded. I don't know what happened because the news won't won't talk about it. But Janet Yellen, who is uh, apparently like the the, the 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 Treasury Director or somebody who knows about the money that's going on in America, she said that by uh, I think it, I think it's September or October. Maybe I'm wrong. But the fifteenth, maybe it's maybe it's October. October. That's why I didn't hear about it yet. That if the if Congress doesn't agree to increase the debt ceiling once again, uh, then we then we are officially launched into the financial crisis right because america is in such great debt and 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 i've also heard that other countries are conspiring behind i say our back but it's not fucking us it's the central bank uh cons- conspiring against the petrodollar's back to start trading among i heard russia you know russia and some of the countries in the middle east and china they're they're getting ready to dump the dollar <laughs> when they dump the dollar that means the game is over Right. So between the amount of debt that we have, the world waking up to uh, the degradation of the dollar and really willingness to dump it, those who are in power, right, the economic, the, the world economic forum, right, Klaus Schwab, these guys know they know what's coming and they're preparing by getting us ready for more Orwellian takedowns. Right. More measures, stronger measures, more lockdown. Right. So that they can enact their nefarious plan right and so that's that's it about that as far as my opinion is concerned right so this this may come i know he introduced this legislation doesn't mean that it's going to come but but it may come where they're going to be monitoring my bank account because i have more than six hundred dollars in it right who the hell doesn't they're going to be monitoring my bank account 
And so I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do, right? If this actually passes, what do I then do? Do you then take as much cash as you can out and put it into precious metals, right? With, with, with this uh, consideration that perhaps others will follow suit and there will be a black market of trade, right? This is what people do when the lords of this world become too tyrannical. They cre and it's already happening, right? Because with this COVID uh, vaccine um, initiative mandate, right, that just came out, all these people, they say it's going to affect 80, 80 million people. A lot of them are like, okay, you're going to fire me from my job? Well, I'm fine. I'm just not going to work for you then, right? And so where are all those people going to go? Those are really, those are, those are people who can work, who want to work, that are able to work, that have talents and abilities and faculties. Where are they going to go? They're going to go places that, that live by a different code, right? And so that's going to be the black market, the black employment market. If you go to gab.com or if you, have, if you follow Alex Torba, who's a creator of Gab, really, really, really smart guy, um, on the Gab platform, which is an alternative to Facebook, he's starting the black market um, employ. He has a he has a he has a the a new employment. I forget what he calls it, but I saw him speaking on Alex Jones the other day, and he was talking about how um, he's creating a marketplace for people to come work when they've been kicked out of their job or fired from their job because they won't take the jab, right? So that's, that's one example of ultimately what we're probably going to see more of. We're going to see people take initiative and create these, these black market trading opportunities, black market currency perhaps even. And it, it will be illegal. But all these things will be uh, options for us who decide to opt out of the tyrannical system. So I'll keep my eye on this. I'll continue to keep my eye on this. Um, and if, if I make some strategic move as a result... I'll be sure to let you guys know. But once again, this may just be more fear mongering. They're, they're saber rattling, prom, you know, talking about doing things that they really have no, they, they really have no uh, uh, power to actually do, right? Like the, like the mandate, like, right? Like the Biden's mandate, I, I, he it doesn't actually have the power to do that, right? It's against the law when he's doing it. Um, but there are people that will just go along with it, right? And then there are those who are going to say no. And so we're going to, see, this is, I think this is where the great separation is happening. Do you ever hear of like in Revelations or, you know, it's revealed through the Bible, there's going to be a great separation, separating the wheat from the shaft, so on and so forth, right? There's going to be a harvesting, right? Harvesting of souls. Some people think it's like a pre-rapture tribulation, right? Well, in a way, I think that this is happening right now because there is a great separation. There is a great separation happening right now. And there are those who Satan's their daddy, right? Shout out to JLP. And there are those that are uh, children of God. And so uh, you got to decide what there's there has been never a time more potent and poignant for choosing sides. I don't think we could be neutral today. I don't think you could be neutral today and have integrity. Right? I think you have to choose a side. And if you choose if you choose if you choose evil, you choose the institutions, you choose the oligarchy, you choose the governments and corporations of the world, the fascist system. Right. Because it really it's not even the governments that are in charge. It's the corporations that are in charge. Right. Uh, then you get your you get what you deserve. Right. And so we've got to wake up. And we've got to be able to see and we've got to make decisions based on uh, logic and uh, and what's right and wrong. We, the, the distinction is becoming more and more clear. So I hope that helps you do I hope that some feed for thought uh, for those of you listening. Uh, done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.